Hi everyone, it's Lynn from Hey Lynn Vintage and today we are going to work on our giant burger. Um, we had picked this because it was out of the hurry up main dishes because it's summer and we all want to get outside and play, right? So this is super fast. We're going to make this today and go over those ingredients. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Kristen D because I got my fly pin here and it is super nice. I absolutely love the color of it. Green is my favorite color. And just a quick short story. The reason that I kind of really like bug pins is because when I was in higher education where I came from, all of our meetings, I wore a fly pin to the meeting because what comes around a lot of S H double 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 T, you know what it is, right? Flies. So all of our meetings, I wore fly pins and my girlfriend, she wore striped pants because she was in prison. <laughs> so well, I was absolutely elated when I was laid off and here I still am a year later. But that is one of the reasons why I love my fly pins because we always want to make sure that we remind ourselves of when we're listening to a bunch of S-H-I, right? You know what I mean. All right, then let's go over these ingredients. All right, everyone, super simple ingredients for this dish. We just need one and a half pounds of ground beef, one and a half teaspoons of salt. I have three ounces of cream cheese here. I mean, they mark it for you so you can cut down your eight ounce blocks that's been sitting here a little while. So it's softened. I have a tablespoon of mustard and a tablespoon of horseradish sauce. We kind of mix the burger, throw it into the pie plate, spread some of this cheese mixture on it, and I guess we're gonna dress it up on a platter. So let's get mixing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up the cream cheese with the mustard and the horseradish because I'm gonna get my hands dirty with the meat. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. So I'm just gonna put my mustard and my horseradish right into the cream cheese and I'm just gonna fold this in. Just like that. <clears throat> you wanna make sure that your cream cheese is softened. And basically you're making a stuffed burger with this little bit of creamy sauce here. All right, once that's mixed, we can just set this aside. And then we're just going to mix our salt. So I have my one and a half teaspoons of salt and we're just going to mix this into our hamburger. I have gloves on, so I just thought it would be easier. So we just wanna make sure that that salt is mixed into the meat mixture really well. And that is the only seasoning that they are putting into this meat mixture. Um, I'm gonna leave mine like this because I wanna follow their recipe. I'm sure this the um, cream cheese mixture will give it some flavor, but we're not actually putting any type of binder or anything within the meat because it is just supposed to be a giant hamburger. So once you have that mixed in, but I would suggest probably adding, I would probably add garlic powder, pepper, or something um, within that line is probably what I'm gonna end up saying at the end. But, um, so we just mix that in really well. And then we're just gonna kind of cut this in half. So I have a little vintage eight, well this is, it calls for an eight inch pie plate, but this is an eight and a half inch, ungreased. So we really just press this into here. So I took half of the meat. And then I still have my other half over here that will go on the top. So we're just gonna press this in here I'm just trying to get it a little bit even. So I just took a um, a whisk and I just kind of beat this mixture up a little bit just to try and get rid of some of the lumps out of it. 
kind of looks like if you were making um, deviled eggs. So this is just our cream cheese, our horseradish, and our mustard. I'm just gonna get this all nice and, I'm just kind of leaving it to the, not to touch the edges of this because we wanna pinch this shut and if you have the mixture all the way to the edge, you're not gonna be able to pinch the meatloaf, well, meat mixture together. So I'm kind of just going kind of to the, right to the edge. But I wanna make sure that, you know, we're not all the way to the edge just so that I can pinch that meat mixture together. So once you have that done, I'm gonna pull some of that away. Then we're just gonna take our other, our other half that we saved. I'm just gonna kind of form this into a little bit of a circle. And then I'm gonna get it form this kind of into a circle so that we can just press it right onto the top of our big hamburger. See what I mean? Now I got mustard all over there. I should have made this patty way bigger and then slapped it on there. But we learn from our mistakes, right? All right, I'm gonna fix this up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so what I kind of did was I kind of pushed it underneath and made sure that like the mixture was kind of all mixed so that it looks like it's pretty sealed. And I just want to say, like, even if you have a little bit of this um, mustard stuff left, don't use it because you got, see, I got raw hamburger in there. You'll end up getting somebody sick. So make sure that you dispose of all of this. Even if you have a little bit, you're tempted to put it on the burger, don't. Okay, so let's put this in our preheated 350 degree oven for 45 degrees. But we want to make sure that we test it, that it's 155 degrees when it comes out of the oven. So we're gonna start at 45, make sure that we're at 155 degrees to come out of the oven. So let's throw this baby in. So our burger is out of the oven and I just, um, it actually shrank quite a bit considering, I mean, eight, eight inch was like, you know, like this. It shrank quite a bit, but still it's kind of impressive big burger. They say just to put the um, French fried onions around it, you know, but I, um, I cut up some tomato, cucumber, some cheese, pepperoni, pickles. I mean, I would put on here whatever your family likes. And maybe even if at the end you wanted to put like some cheese on the top and just let that um, bake, bake off, I would do that. But I think adding onions... And serving this probably in those lettuce cups like we did last week for our seafood salad, I think would be really great. Um, so I'm going to try this and get back to you with other suggestions. So that's not too bad if you served it like this. You can still see the mustard in the center there. I just got some cucumbers, a pickle, and some tomato. Let's try this out. All right, everyone, thoughts on our hamburger, the giant burger that we just made today. I really liked it. I didn't think at first that it was gonna have enough flavor, like I had mentioned when we were making it, 
but it actually did. It had a really good flavor to it and the horseradish was not overpowering. Um, it did shrink a lot. Um, I mean, I don't, I usually buy 80, 20 hamburgers. So I mean, you went from a burger like about like this to like this. So it shrank quite a bit in our pie pan, but it was pretty easy to get out. And then I just arranged some vegetables around it. On the picture here, it looks like they had put ketchup on it, but on the instructions, it does not state anything about putting ketchup on it. I would serve it with what you think your family would like, whether that would be to serve it over lettuce, to serve it with cut up vegetables on that platter, to maybe melt cheese on the top before you take it out of the oven. The items that you think your family would enjoy, whether they like olives or they like cut up vegetables or you want to serve it over lettuce, is what I think you should do with it. Because the burger itself is really nice and a lot of us are trying to eat a little bit more low carb. And with that big a burger, you're just slicing it and you're skipping the bun, which made it even nicer because then you didn't really miss it because it just wasn't there. So I liked it for that reason. It was light, it was super easy, and it did have a good flavor. I think cutting up a bunch of pickles, olives, it would be great. It was great. So next week, we're gonna do the next card in this series of Hurry Up Main Dishes. So we're gonna do Green Bean Bunwiches. So this does have a um, frozen make-ahead hamburger mix. So we're going to go over their make-ahead hamburger mix. And then we're going to make some of these green bean bunwiches. I'm kind of curious on how we are layering green beans, hamburger, pickles, and cheese on a bun. So that's what we're going to do next week. So don't forget to come back next week on Wednesday to see how our green bean bun witches turn out. With that being said, this is Lynn from Halen Vintage. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for helping my channel grow. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.